always love to come down to Premier Orlando to talk about color. And as many of you know, I teach color all around the country. Um, my thing is to elevate hair color to an art form. And um, I hope everybody knows I have my own brand of hair color. But no matter what brand you're using, I think it's important to know the trends and the issues we face and what's really going on in the world of color. So let me give you a few little numbers that you may or not be, not be interested in, but I think we should know as colorists. I have a dear friend who I worked with years ago uh, at a major manufacturer in New York City who is a Harvard genius at statistics. And every year he puts together the Salon Industry Report, which is very expensive and which I bought this year. Because what I really wanted to do was understand the business, the future, and what's going on in hair color. And here's the good news. Hair color has been named the Axis Service in beauty salons. And in a couple of years when salon businesses weren't doing well or remained flat and some services fell off, hair color in the last year grew, so it's up, 3.7%. That's business up. Good for us. So when everybody else was dying or not being able, there was a little, you know, people coming in for blow dries, for cuts for um, thermal treatments, for perms, all that kind of stuff. Flat business, and some of it falling off. And a lot of it's because of the, the current economic situation, people putting an appointment that should be every three weeks, every four or five weeks, but we kept growing. 3.7% might not sound like a lot, but it sure is when everything else is going down. We kept going up. So they call us the Axis Service. And if you're taking notes, and you need to justify to a salon owner who might not be in the color. What we've learned is that we understand that people who come for hair color more readily become cut and style clients because they want to get it done in the same salon. But if people come to a salon only for cuts and color isn't made a big thing about, and we don't really support the color, people will drift from salon to salon for different cuts. And I think you know the newest cool guy in town or the woman who just got an award. People will leave and leave. When a person becomes addicted to or has a super duper relationship with their hair colorist, they don't go anywhere. They're scared. They really become very, very, very into the colorist who takes care of them, and that's good for us. Just so you guys know, with you, if you have a beauty salon, there are 302,000 beauty salons in the United States that are registered. 75% of them employ one to four people. Now, if you work in a salon like I do that has more than 20 people, that's only 2% of the salons in America. So most salons are smaller. Most salons employ smaller numbers of people. Men's color, now admitted, now because a lot of guys will never admit this, you know. 18 to 20 percent of men in America have some form of color in their hair. 18 to 20 percent, now that's big, which translates to 150 million dollars in salon services. How about that? Most men want the hair colored with a demi-permanent color. Why? Most are blending gray. Now, I think if you think about guys, most guys don't mind if they have a little bit of gray hair, right? They think that they look like silver fox. They think they look like Robert Redford or something, even if they don't. They think that. So men, men like a little bit of gray, but when it gets too gray, they're scared they're going to lose their job, look old. And a lot of men, when they do candidly say, they got to say, look, I, I compete every day with men younger than I am in the job world. And so I don't care if I have a little gray, but I don't want it to get too white. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, years ago, I used to do Peter Jennings' hair, God rest his soul. He was great. And you look at different news guys, and if you looked when Tom Brokaw was on the Today Show years ago, they used to paint more pepper into his salt. And now that he's retired more, he has allowed his hair to grow all white. And it doesn't look as good. Now, you look at a guy like Anderson Cooper, who is, and I have met him, he is precious. 
That is premature white hair, but he has a young face, a very young face, and a great body, and those ice blue eyes. So gray hair doesn't make him look old. But there are guys who are in their mid-40s, late-40s, 50s, and on, who really say they don't mind, and they don't want their gray hair to look yellow. They want it to look silver. So with the use of demi-permanent colors, like my demi-cream or demi-liquid, um, you're not using any ammonia, so they avoid that. You've seen guys with dye jobs and their hair is bright red. It's like, who are you fooling? Or guys who have their hair um, Elvis Presley black. Who are you fooling? <laughs> or guys who think if they leave their sideburns totally white and they make the rest black, you know, that, that, who are they fooling? A lot of senators do that. It looks like they used a ruler and, and taped this, and they left the sideburns white, and then they dyed the rest of the hair. Who are they fooling, you know? Um, or that guy on the Sopranos, Polly Walnuts, who left this all white. And, the, and I met him in person. All I could do was stare at that. It's like hilarious. It's like, it's totally black, and this was left out, and he thought that looked natural. But the thing about, when you, by the way, if you're taking notes, a lot of guys' sideburns just don't cover, and the way to make them cover is after you put the color on, get a toothbrush. I think I told you this last year. And first brush the, co the color up, then down, then up, then down on the sideburn. The friction from the brush as well as the brush's ability to push that through that bushy hair, makes the gray cover. Remember this, everybody, beard hair, ha um, sideburn hair is beard hair. It's completely different from the hair on a guy. A guy might have super fine nothing hair, but the sideburns are all gray, right? So those are the kinds of things we know according to um, what's happening in the status finder's world. But notice demi-permanent color for blending gray. That's the hottest thing going. And I think most of us have used permanent color, permanent color, permanent color all too much. Let me just go through a modern take for just a second when we think about permanent color. <clears throat> now, if you look at a beauty school book that was written in 1935, it's going to be different than the books written today. Permanent color should basically be used to cover gray and when you want to lighten hair. Example, a lady has no gray, but she's dark brown and wants to be a lighter brown. A person is a brunette and wants to be a redhead. A person is a very light brownette or dark blonde and wants to be a lighter blonde. Now, unless they want to be platinum, they can be high lift single process color with permanent dye. So permanent dye is best to use when you want to cover gray or when you want to lighten natural hair. But there's a lot of times when you don't need to lighten hair. You need to darken it. So years ago, uh, they used to tell us, well, you know, you can take permanent dye and lower the volume of the developer and add something called filler or an intensifier to do your low lightings or toning of blonde. Or if a woman is light blonde and you want to make her dark blonde, just use a darker blonde permanent dye. Well, that didn't work so well because bringing that ammoniated high alkaline product through the hair lengths made hair like it looked like a, an SOS pad, you know, not pretty. The more you bring alkalinity through the hair, the more, let's face it, one Brazilian relaxer doesn't hurt somebody. After they've had 12, the hair doesn't look quite as good. Am I right? When you bleach the hair up light once, it's okay as long as you properly lighten it and condition it. If you keep bleaching the hair and overlapping the bleach over and over again, the hair is going to break off, right? So everything has to do with alkalinity. So permanent dye has to be alkaline. In fact, my dear friend Tuki, who's going to do our roving microphone, is our chemist and works with us. And what we have to know, and this is important because it's not the peroxide that gives the formula the strength. It's not the peroxide. It's the alkalinity of the color. The higher the lift in permanent dye, the more alkalinity. We know from our wonderful Shiseido Joint Co-Color, uh, chemist who made my line, Beth Minardi, that I hope you'll, you'll try, that we need to get a pH, this is important for you to take back to the salon, of 9.3. If, if a formula, a color formula, has the pH, which means potential hydrogen, of 9.3, it will be able to lighten hair. So you need certain alkalinity in order to lighten hair. And that's what ammonia or MEA or AMP or any of the different permanent, anything that has the ability to lift has to have 
an alkaline, a catalyst that's alkaline. Does everybody get me? There's no such thing as nice, friendly, soft, permanent dye, or it wouldn't lift. But what about the times you don't need to lift? What about a lady who has light brown hair with gray, and she's a very conservative lady, and she says, I want you to cover my gray, but I do not want you to change my hair one bit. Well, even if you use permanent dye on her at her same or similar level, and you get a formula that's warm and balanced to cover the gray, she's going to swear her hair is red, right? And in a month, she's going to get a solid line of demarcation and say you gave her roots. It happens. So now there's new ways to address gray hair. If you are totally happy addressing gray hair with a pH of at least 9.3 with permanent dye, Continue doing that. If you have a woman who has brown hair and you've got to make it red, you've got to use permanent dye or you're not going to get the lift. If you have a woman who has light brown hair and she wants to be a blonde, you have to use permanent dye. But supposing she is a faded out blonde and you want her to look to be a prettier blonde, well, you can highlight it. That'll give her more pizzazz. And that'll look like blonde on blonde with the lighter pieces. But what about if you want to put low lights in that hair? What about if you want to put a, a light or mid or deeper blonde strands, tiny strands through the hair, so she looks gorgeous, like blonde on blonde, like you see Goldie Hawn, not Goldie Hawn, but her daughter Kate Hudson right now, or like you see um, Sofia Vergara, who's got the, the uh, ombre look but deeper pieces. So to deepen the hair, and let's call that to, to do a toner on a blonde, or low lights, and you know I'm a big low light fan. You should start thinking of demi-permanent color. I think demi-permanent color is probably one of the best inventions since like fire, okay? Demi-permanent color has the ability to match hair color, to deepen hair color, and to effectively blend or cover gray. So now, you don't need to use ammonia, and the alkalinity doesn't need to be as high unless you want to lighten hair. Does everybody get that? So in start to, to give the hair personality, you might have to do one formula on the roots if she's a brunette and wants to lighten to a red. But on her ends, to keep them red, you should not be bringing that same formula through the ends like we were taught in beauty school. You need to glaze the hair with a demi-permanent. Now, demi-permanents, act differently. There are, how many, raise your hand if your salon uses some demi-permanent. A lot of you use Shades EQ. A lot of you use Wella Color Touch. A lot of you use Colorance by Goldwell. A lot of you use Beth Minardi demis. <laughs> okay. Okay. So most every company makes demis. Now a lot of demis are more alkaline and some are more acidic. So it's nice to, I'm going to explain you quickly before we start having some fun Q's and A's, the difference between a cream demi and a liquid. I believe every salon needs bleach, every salon needs permanent dye, every salon needs a liquid demi, and every salon needs a cream demi. Because bringing cream demis through the ends, most of which are alkaline, start to make the hair look real crispy critters, okay? This we can think of as tough stuff at the root. This has been for rides in cars, it's been shampooed, it's been in the sun, it's been brushed, it's been slept on, it's been twirled around. What this fiber has experienced, this baby stuff just coming out of the hair, has never had. So we have to treat this like a baby, like a cashmere sweater, and this we can pair, treat like a pair of jeans. This fiber, which you, if you've ever come to my classes in the, in the past, is called zone one is the hair that just grew out of the head. It has just become fully keratinized. It is still privy to the, head, the uh, heat of the scalp, and it behaves beautifully. As we become more porous and more damaged, this is the stuff we have to worry about. And by balancing what we do with no-lift demi-colors, we can do it. Let's talk about deepening the hair. Tone or low lights, demi-permanent color. Um, liquid demis, like Beth Minardi liquid, is acidic, and I want you to put this down. Acidic. Anything acidic does something wonderful if it's mixed with the right conditioners. 
Acidic colors close the cuticle, close the cortex after they deposit a sheer amount of, of condition and a sheer amount of color. They are see-through. Let's pretend, let's compare them to a glass of iced tea. You take a glass of iced tea and you hold it up to a window and you can kind of see through it. So liquid demi colors are acidic and translucent. And you know what that's great for? Every time you give a woman a retouch and you've got that permanent dye on her roots, for the last 10 to 15 minutes, you're going to refresh her hair with a demi-permanent liquid glaze. Are any of you doing that now? We do it at all. I love you guys. If I talked to an audience 20 years ago, they would stare at me like, why would I do that? Okay. And by the way, as I speak to you, if there's something that you love that you know works for you and you don't want to change it, don't. Because who am I to stand up here and tell you what to do? I'm just telling you how it's worked for me and a lot of other colorists around the country. So I totally respect what you're doing if that's what you're into. So demi liquids, they are translucent and acidic. So how great, the lady comes in, her red is faded, you put on her regular retouch formula and you glaze her hair. And she'll say, my goodness, it's so shiny and it's easier to comb and I, I admit my hair's never been in better condition. But let's talk about the cream demis. There are lots on the market. Um, <clears throat> they are more alkaline. And they are opaque, which means they are not as see-through. So they're excellent for low lighting. And they're excellent for um, covering gray without lift. So these liquid and cream demis can match or darken hair. No lift. So how wonderful, this lady with light brown hair comes in and she comes on with her husband, she's gripping the chair and she says, I have gray and I want to cover it and I, uh, I don't want anything to show. Well. Okay, there's two ways to handle this. You can take a demi, -lit cream, a demi cream. You had them too, right? I had a woman have her husband come in, and I thought like they were in labor. She was having her hair cut from here to the terribly buzzed off look of here. Her, yeah, you have that? She, kept, she comes in for a consultation, she's almost crying, and I'm going, I thought, oh my God, the poor thing, what's the matter? So her husband comes in, and I'm not kidding you, we wash her hair, and he has to hold her hand and talk. And she's like, Ooh. <laughs> and it was like literally from here to here. This is, yeah, but, but anyway, you know how attached they are to their hair. Okay, we don't have to get into that. Okay. So you have this lady comes in, she has mostly brown hair, but she has strands of, brown, of gray coming through. Here's what I would do on her first appointment. I would never dump anything all over her head. I would use a cream demi at the same level as her brown hair or slightly a little tiny bit lighter, cream demi. My cream demis are mixed with five volume developer. The volume of developer when you're working with demis has nothing to do with the gray coverage, it's the level you choose. And I would go through the head and try to pick up the gray hairs, most of them. I'd wrap them in foil, I'd process for 20 minutes under heat, get her cool for five minutes, take her down and she will have most all the gray gone and she will love you. Now she trusts you because you didn't change her hair color, right? The gray just seems to be gone. You can someday build her into a client where as her gray continues to, I would continue highlighting, high, low lighting her with the demi until the percentage changed. And then I would f take that formula, maybe lighten it a bit and go do an all over global application. The key thing about covering gray with, any, with a demi, my demi's mixed with five volume, heat 20 minutes, cool 20 minutes.